Pray with me this lovely prayer that a friend of mine prayed recently. God, lover of life, lover of these lives, God, lover of our souls, lover of our bodies, lover of all that exists. In fact, it is your love that keeps it all alive. May we live in this love. May we never doubt this love. May we know that we are love, that we are created for love, that we are reflection of you, that you love yourself in us, and therefore we are perfectly lovable. May we never doubt this deep and abiding and perfect goodness. We are because you are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. The call to worship today is from Psalm 96, 1 to 3. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples.
by Christ redeemed in Christ restored we keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord until This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Until Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, grace of Jesus Deeper than the mighty rolling sea, the rolling sea. Higher than the devil's grace Most and all sufficient grace for, for even me, for even me Broader than the scope of my transgression Sing is greater far than all my sin and shame, shame, shame Oh magnify the precious name of Jesus Praise his name Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most divine, by its transforming power, making him God's dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity, and the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of matchless Jesus, grace of Jesus deeper than the mighty rolling sea, the rolling sea, higher than the devil's grace, like and all sufficient grace for, for even me, me, for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression, seeing is greater far than all my sin and shame, my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 1674. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3. Before Charles Wesley or Isaac Watts, there was Thomas Ken, who has been called England's first hymnist. He was born in 1637 in Little Berkhampstead on the fringes of Greater London. When his parents died, he was raised by his half-sister and her husband, who enrolled him in Winchester College, an historic boys' school. Thomas was later ordained to the ministry and returned to Winchester as a chaplain. To encourage the devotional habits of the boys, Thomas wrote three hymns in 1674. This was revolutionary because English hymns had not yet appeared. Only the Psalms were sung in public worship. Ken suggested the boys use the hymns privately in their rooms. One hymn was to be sung upon waking, another at bedtime, and a third at midnight if sleep didn't come. His morning hymn had 13 stanzas, beginning with, Awake, my soul, and with the sun thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off dull sloth and joyful rise to pay the morning sacrifice. His evening hymn, equally meaningful, included this verse. All praise to thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, O oh, keep me, King of kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. All three hymns ended with a common stanza, which has since become the most widely sung verse in the world. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In 1680, Thomas was appointed chaplain to England's King Charles II. It was a thankless job, as Charles kept a variety of mistresses. Once the king asked to lodge a mistress in the chaplain's residence, Thomas rebuked him, saying, Not for the king's kingdom. Afterward, the king referred to him as that little man who refused lodging to poor Nellie. During the reign of the next king, James II, Thomas, by now a bishop, was sent to the Tower of London for his Protestant convictions. After his release, Thomas retired to the home of a wealthy friend where he died on March 11, 1711. He was buried at sunrise and the doxology was sung at his funeral. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. From whom all blessings flow Praise Him, all creatures here below Praise Him above the heavenly host Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise Father. Son and Holy
Alas, and did my Savior bleed. 1707. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6.14. After his graduation from college, Isaac Watts returned to Southampton, England, and spent two years writing hymns for Above Bar Congregational Church. He then moved to London to tutor children in a wealthy family of dissenters. While there, he joined Mark Lane Independent Chapel. Soon, he was asked to be a teacher in the church, and in 1698, he was hired as associate pastor. There, on his 24th birthday, he preached his first sermon. In 1702, he became senior pastor of the church, a position he retained the rest of his life. He was a brilliant Bible student, and his sermons brought the church to life. In 1707, his hymns and spiritual songs was published. Isaac had written most of these hymns in Southampton while in late teens and early 20s. Included was a hymn now considered the finest hymn ever written in the English language. It was based on Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Originally, the first stanza said, When I survey the wondrous cross where the young Prince of Glory died. In an enlarged 1709 edition, Watts rewrote the lines to say, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Also included in the 1707 hymn book was Heavenly Joy on Earth, better known today as Come We That Love the Lord, or We Are Marching to Zion. Another hymn was Godly Sorrow Arising from the Sufferings of Christ, better known as Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. This hymn later played a major role in the conversion of a great American hymnist. In 1851, Fanny Crosby, 31, attended a revival service at John Street Methodist Church in New York. After a prayer was offered, she recalled, they began to sing the grand old consecration hymn, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. And when they reached the third line of the fifth stanza, Here, Lord, I give myself away, my very soul was flooded with celestial light. How right that what should, long after his death, play a part in winning to Christ, the author of a new generation of hymns and gospel songs. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he Devote that sacred head for such a wretch as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled. Thereby faith I received my 
for the beauty of the earth, 1864. Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor is there any God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears, 2 Samuel 7, 22. Foyot Sanford Pierpoint, that's the unlikely name of the author of this great hymn. Foyot was born October 7, 1835 in Bath, England. After graduating from Cambridge, he taught at Somersetshire College in his home area of Bath. One day, when he was 29, Foyot found himself walking in the countryside on a beautiful spring day. He saw the ocean of green, the blue dome of heaven, and the winding Avon River cutting through the flowery landscape. Overwhelmed with God's creative brilliance, he wrote this poem. He intended it primarily for communion services in the Anglican Church, but when it jumped the Atlantic, it quickly became associated with the American Thanksgiving holiday. In Foliot's original version, version, each verse ended with, Christ our God, to thee we raise, this our sacrifice of praise. That line was eventually changed to, Lord of all, to thee we raise, this our hymn of grateful praise. Little else is known about Foley at Sanford Pierpont. He resigned from his position at Somersetshire and apparently moved from place to place, teaching some, writing hymns, and publishing his poetry. He died in 1917. For the Beauty of the Earth is one of only a few songs devoted purely to giving thanks. One of the strange things about the attitude of gratitude is that we tend to exhibit it in reverse proportion to the number of blessings received. The more we have, the less thankful we are. Among the lessons Viktor Frankl learned in the Nazi death camp Auschwitz was to take time to be thankful and to count your blessings. He wrote that prisoners in the camp dreamed at night about certain things more than others. Bread, cakes, and nice warm baths, the very things we take for granted every day. Ralph Waldo Emerson observed that if the constellations appeared only once in a thousand years, imagine what an exciting event it would be. But because they're there every night, we barely give them a look. One of the evidences of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives is a gradual reversal of that twisted pattern. God wants to make us people who exhibit a thankfulness in proper proportion to the gifts and blessings we've received. Why not take time to sing this hymn to the Lord right now? For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from above over and around us lies, Lord of all to
take my life and let it be, 1874. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, Philippians 3.8. Although hymnist Frances Havergal had served the Lord for years, she felt something was missing in her Christian experience. Then one day in 1873, she received a little book called All for Jesus, which stressed the importance of making Christ the King of every corner and cubicle of one's life. Soon thereafter, she made a fresh and complete consecration of herself to Christ. Years later, when asked about it, she replied, Yes, it was on Advent Sunday, December 2nd, 1873. I first saw clearly the blessedness of true consecration. I saw it as a flash of electric light, and what you see, you can never unsee. There must be full surrender before there can be full blessedness. Not long afterward, she found herself spending several days with 10 people in a house, some of them unconverted. Others were Christians, but not fully surrendered to Christ. Lord, give me all in this house, she prayed. She went to work witnessing, and before she left, all 10 were yielded Christians. On the last night of her visit, Francis, too excited to sleep, wrote this great consecration hymn, Take My Life. In the years that followed, Francis frequently used this hymn in her own devotions, especially every December 2nd, on the anniversary of her consecration. On one occasion, as she pondered the words, Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my king. She felt she should give up her secular concerts. Her beautiful voice was in demand, and she frequently sang with the Philharmonic. But from that moment, her lips were exclusively devoted to the songs of the Lord. On another occasion, she was praying over the stanza that says, Take my silver and my gold, not a mite should I withhold. She had accumulated a great deal of jewelry, but now she felt she should donate it to the Church Missionary Society. Writing to a friend, she said, I retain only a brooch for daily wear, which is a memorial to my dear parents. Also, a locket with the holy portrait I have of my niece in heaven. I had no idea I had such a jeweler's shop. Nearly 50 articles are being packed off. I don't think I need to tell you, I never packed a box with more pleasure. Have you given your life, everything, over to Jesus? Why not make this the date of your own complete consecration? Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love, at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always on me for my King. Always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, Not a might would I withhold, Not a might would I withhold. Take my will and let it shine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour, at thy feet each treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all 
for thee
singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave, Savior, you can move the mountains, Lord, you are mighty to save, you are mighty to save forever, author of salvation, you rose and conquered the grave, yes, you conquered the grave. Please pray with me. Forgiving God, we confess that we are conformed to this world. We conform to this world's frantic pace, too hectic to notice all the blessings that you provide. We conform to this world's reckless waste, exploiting what you entrust to our care. We conform to this world's shallow values, oblivious to the giftedness of people different from us. We conform to this world's impatient attitudes, preferring the latest instead of the lasting. Forgive our conformity and transform us, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. His presence is woven in time. The stars leave not their assignment. The seasons repeat perfect rhyme. And oceans flow. Them. Mountains his greatness proclaim. All things speak of his greatness, even winds whisper. Just 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 